Hi, this is Fifi LaRue with a new video for you. <laughs> you know it's me. It's Nancy L.T. Hamilton and we finally got our act together and have a new video for you. I'm going to start this video with a little sad tale. This morning while I was spackling on my makeup in my 10 time magnifying mirror because I can't see anything without my glasses, a shaft of beautiful sunlight came in from the side window and illuminated the fur on my upper lip. Oh, I said, I have a full on mustache. <laughs> oh, joy. Uh, new new adventure in, in aging. It's a surprise every day. Anyway, what does this mean to you? Why do you even care? Um, I, I thought it was a very poor, or but a good enough analogy about today's project. Um, I started out doing one thing and discovered something new. So today uh, we're going to be working with the um, Pepe uh, Superior ring bending tool that I just got and um, I will talk a little more about that in a minute. I just want to show you some of the evolution of the ideas that I got um, while I kept saying to myself, this has got to do more than bend thick ring shanks. I don't want a tool that does one thing. So I started playing around for the last couple days. So if you look below, you'll see, yes, we were bending some rings. And, oh, what if we bent some fancy wire? And, oh, what if we made those fancy wire into earrings? And, oh, and let's carry it a little further. <laughs> And then I started bending tubing, thin tubing. And then I bent thick tubing, and that didn't work at all. Um, and then I was working on this piece, and I thought, oh, I bet I could make partial half tubing with this. So I did that. You can also do a ring shank like this with thick wire. And this is what it's best for, is bending heavy, thick stock. This is a serving spoon that I'm making into a hinge bracelet. So, um, anyway, that's, that's what the gist of today's video is going to be. I'm going to show you how to make these two ring, earrings. They're really fast, and they have an interesting, um, simple hooking system, which is just two little um, tubes and a piece of balled up wire. Of course, it won't stay up because it's rude. So, and then this takes about, I don't know, maybe ten minutes to make this pair of earrings. So... We're going to get started now. So the first thing we need to talk about is how the um, Pepe Superior ring bending dingy wingy works. Um, it comes in this set down here. Not, it doesn't come with these. These are actually these are Dalrin, uh, I don't know, pressy thingies. I'm sure they have a f word for them. But there's a a round piece and then a corresponding uh, pushy part and you can see that they fit tightly you know against the sides of it it comes with these two yahoos over here which I really I played with for about two hours and just kind of went well hmm so I don't know if that does anything for me but the round ones definitely are interesting and it also see this little doohickey here this uh, comes off if you want to just bolt this to a piece of wood or to your desktop. You can do that or you put this on and you can use it in a vise like this. And um, you need a uh, some kind of key, chuck key. What's it called? Oh my god. Allen wrench. Okay, so this is Fred by the way. So um, the to use it with a basic ring uh, making for making a basic ring. Um, the sizes are very limited. I found that the number 20 is about a 10, 10 and a half, and then the 16 is a, like a 6 and a half. So you have to adjust the sizing on it. This is really awesome. It, uh, it does most of its best work with really heavy stock where it's killing you to bend it over a ring mandrel. Um, this is really thin, but it's just for example. So what I've found um, is you got to put the round guy in first because it's really hard to get the pushy guy in after. 
And this uh, theoretically slides right into here. Or did I do it back backwards? Nope, see, I'm gonna do that first. I've put this in here about 10 times. I don't understand why it's not fitting. Looks like I have the wrong one. No. Uh, that might help. Muy stupid mujer. So I'm going to, when I, when I bend a normal ring, I want the shank sitting flat on the bottom here. And then you just pull this handle towards you and work your way around like this. And you can get really fast if you want. The nice thing about doing it with a ring bender like this is that you don't end up with um, one side slightly larger than the other like on a um, on a ring manual because it's graduated so this is a you know per all perpendicular sides so you're you're going to end up with a much cleaner round on it but like in this case usually what I would do on this for a smaller ring is to start with a smaller um, size this this pudding and stuff. Make it smaller and then stretch it out on the ring mandrel. So now it's a teeny teeny ring and I'll just slide it on here to what size I want. So I wanted an eight, nine. Okay, that size fits perfectly. And you'll see this joint is like set up. I'm ready to solder, um, which is really sweet. You know, so if you pre-size your, your thingies, rings, get the right size metal, use a smaller die, shrink it, slide it onto the size you want, you're ready. It takes about two minutes. So it's, it's pretty cool for that. Um, and I haven't found any marring using this steel. Um, the Delrin I did find is great for the tubing, which I will show you. Um, for the, Let's pretend we're making a pair of I'm not even going to pick it up. I'm not even lowering myself to pick them up. For this, these earrings here, these little tube earrings, bending tubing can be extremely annoying and extremely difficult. So, I was thrilled when I found out that I could actually do this without um, crushing the tubing. So, but you got to use the Delrun uh, pusher thingy because um, the other one crushes it. So, I just... And I'm, I'm not pounding on this. I'm just gently, really gently pushing around. And you feed with your left hand. And you want to try to keep this stupid thing flat. But then again, with my imperfections, it's muy difícil. I'm just going around. And I'll probably go past the point of uh, where I want to cut it. This, it's just so cool to be able to bend tubing, I can't tell you. I spent like three weeks with one woman emailing back and forth about how to bend tubing and we explored every method. So now we have a little perfect tubing circle. There's a little tiny duva there and I don't know what I did there, why I bent it. Um, this tubing is, there's a limit <coughs> on how far you can go with tubing as far as what tubing size. This is uh, 1.75 and I have done it with, what's this? That's 1.75. See it works with the smaller really well too, the 1.48 or 1.50. Oh my, remember my calipers are off. And I think up the next size uh, from that should work. You can just try it, you know, this is a great scrap project. I always have these little pieces of tubing left, so, um, and wire. So it's a, it's, you know, I've got this little extra, you can whip a pair of earrings. So at this point, what I'm going to do is, um, get ready to saw this. Um, and I think that's it for the moment and we'll go on to this next. Okay. So what I want is, uh, 10 millimeters between this end uh, and the other end so I just measured it and marked it and what I'm going to do now is saw this get off my bracelet saw this part right now and I'm going to use my tubing saw or cutter thing because um, God, I'm 
just so eloquent. It's amazing. Because it's so much easier trying to saw this tubing flat. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, so I ran the blade through. Of course, I ran it through backwards. I can't see my mark, so I have to turn it over. But we'll get there eventually. I swear to God. Saw blade belly. I do it right this time? Okay. And I'm just going to set it in the groove and line up my mark with the slot here. Go ahead and cut it. Now this tubing that I'm using just go on the floor. Everything else does. This tubing that I'm using is slightly bigger than the 20 gauge wire that I like to use for ear wires. So I'm going to um, do a little crimping. I have another tubing here that fits perfectly. Telescopes, telescopes, telescopes in perfectly. Um, so you could make these earrings with that, or you could do this little, this little scrunchy thing I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, first, I want to do one more thing. I want to finish off these ends with a, um, a cupper, just to make them party. So, I can find my foot pedal, and I'll be able to do this. So, at the, by the way, at this point, you want to make the second one of these and use this one as a pattern for the second one to adjust the size. So you have two the same size, or you may not want to have two the same size. You might want to be very rad right up there. I'm going to do this one. Come in. Just wiggling around a little bit. Get all the edges. Okay, so now the edges are smooth and they're not going to jag on anything. I can put Mr. Flex Shaft away. So, for the wire, I don't... Uh, I know I brought a cutter over. There we go. I love my power... What are these? Kiega power cutters? Kiega. So, I'm not going to measure yet. But this is uh, 20 gauge and I'm using our gentium wire because it doesn't, well this is tarnished, I don't know why, but I must have dropped something on it. It doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't tarnish um, a lot and it um, balls up beautifully and it's, it's my new wire of choice. So this is loose in here, you can see it's going to fall out. So what I'm going to do is um, put it in here and just gently, slowly crimp around the edge. I think my cat's snoring. Until it's tight in there. <laughs> Unlike that. Back in there, you little dog. Oh my god. She was snoring. So, anyway, you just go ahead and crimp it down, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go stick a little piece of solder right here and solder this in, um, and we're almost done. Okay, I have fluxed and dropped a pound of solder between the tubing and my wire. And what I'm doing now, I've got a really low flame on here because there's not a lot of metal going on. And I'm heating up the base metal, not the wire because that's going to go first. If anything's going to melt, it'll be the wire. So now I kind of touch up there once in a while. Remember the trick is to bring things up to temperature together, both pieces of metal you're joining. So let's see how that wire just wants to f give up. Come on. There we go. It's a little blobby. I turn it. Oh, now you guys can't see it. Surprise! Okay. So my wire is has slumped, but that's not an issue at all for me. And quench and pickle, and then we will. Um, I'll show you how to finish this up. And oh, I put too much solder on that. 
teeny tiny little bit of solder because it's a teeny tiny little thing. So uh, we'll pickle and I'll see you in a sec. So I know I'm not looking at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to clean this up, <clears throat> but the wire's in there now. And we want this, the ear wire, to follow the natural curve um, of the piece. So I'm using a, a plier that's got a rounded edge on one side and a square on the other. And I'm just going to shape it a little bit. You can open it up this way. One thing I do want to say about when you're making this hollow tubing earring, you probably should boil it in uh, baking soda because the pickle gets inside here. Um, either that or run a thin stream of water down in here to try to rinse it out thoroughly. So, anyway, and move this back and forth a little bit is not a bad idea. A little work hardens it because that soldering process we just did um, annealed this. So, I'm going to bend this back out again. Come on, let's not act like a moron. And I'm just going to round it down kind of farish. Okay, now what I'm going to do is determine, I, this wire is going to stick in, here let me show you, so it's going to stick in here. So you want to have, see these are going to open and close like that, so you want to have a couple millimeters extra um, for fitting into that other side. So, you know, let's see. Cut it here. If you if you cut it too short, don't panic. You can just squeeze the tubing a little closer together. But you're gonna have to do it um, on the same side, on the other pair, other part part of the pair. Let's not cut the tubing at the same time. And um, I want to clean this curve up a little. It's still pretty funky looking. Um, and I'm also going to use my little ball burr and finish this end off because you don't want to put sharp unfinished wire into your ears. This is way too big. Let me find a poquito one. There we go. You can tell I've been taking Spanish classes. Muy importante. Vi vivo in California. Hey. <laughs> okay, so we got that rounded out. Now we can test our earring. I'm going to put a little tension on it by wiggling it. And it's not quite right shape. Futs around. And there's your hoop earring. So, making two of them. <laughs> and you've got a pair and that took us, what, maybe five, maybe ten minutes. Maybe. So that's pretty quick. And it's soldered and everything. You could hang stuff off of this. You could solder things down on the bottom. You can make uh, little um, washers to run down in here and maybe solder them in place. Lots of different things you can do. Then you can flatten this too. If, but don't flatten the end where you're going to put the wire in. That won't work. So that's earring one. Okay, I'm going to get set up for earring two.